If you open an iPhone, this is what you'd see. All these parts were put together by a company called Foxconn. Many of the parts themselves are manufactured by Foxconn. Almost any piece of electronics has at least some components from the company, which is owned by this guy, billionaire Terry Guo. He found success by making massive deals with the world's biggest tech companies and being able to follow through. He's always put client delivery number one, even at times if that means taking a loss or taking big risks on buying equipment or setting up facilities, because he's confident that once he lands that order, they're going to be stuck with him, and it's usually the case. He's even expanded operations into the US by building a $14.5 billion factory in Wisconsin. This is how one man turned a small operation in a shed into the biggest electronics operation on the planet. Foxconn is one of the largest employers in the world with over 1 million workers during peak iPhone season. And that's a commodity politicians like to offer during election time, jobs. So when it came time for President Donald Trump and various US states to decide where they wanted the promised factory, Guo had them playing against each other for the best offer. And Wisconsin took the bait and, uh, and offered a lot. They offered massive, massive incentives to, to get Foxconn there. Really one of the largest incentive packages in US history. Critics say the factory will most likely not create as many jobs as promised. And people are calling it a white elephant. But Guo doesn't care. Wisconsin is paying him $4.5 billion in taxpayers' money, or $1,800 per taxpayer. We've got a Green Bay Packers jersey with your name on it. At the end of the day, Terry Gore is a big winner, and it's yet to be seen whether Wisconsin will be a winner. Other countries have sought similar deals, including Brazil, Indonesia, and even various Chinese provinces. And that's because Guo has a reputation for being able to pull off massive operations, offering companies a one-stop shop for electronics. And there's no other company in the world that can do what Terry Guo does. Even two decades later, Foxconn is still the master of assembly. And it's because Terry Guo is always looking to try and, you know, look ahead and try and uh, keep customers happy. Early on, Guo saw opportunity by streamlining processes via automation and cutting out the middlemen. In the 1970s, Taiwan had a booming export economy. But most electronics from that time were made in Japan, where the factories were, and then traded in Taiwan, who had the connections to the Western world. A 23-year-old Gua worked as a shipping clerk and got a first-hand view of the potential to make money. And he realized, well, you know, there's money in this. Maybe I should go out on my own and, and do some of this. Why be the person in the middle when I can be the one doing the actual original production? He decided to go into business for himself. Using a $7,500 loan from his mother, he rented a shed in a gritty Taipei suburb called Tuchang, bought a couple of plastic molding machines, and started making channel-changing knobs for black and white televisions. After that, he had a series of big breaks, starting with making components for Atari and later Dell. At that time, Dell and other PC companies would buy parts from their suppliers and assemble them in their own factories. But Gua created a production line integrating most of these parts and processes, from the raw steel for PC casings and electrical connectors to the final assembly. Gua was also among the first wave of Taiwanese to set up factories in mainland China. He saw the writing on the wall in the 70s that this was a place to do business, to, to build things, to manufacture things. Not only at a, at a low labour rate, but there was just going to be plentiful uh, staff. All these years later, 40 years later, it's, it's almost the most perfect government uh, corporate partnerships in history. Eventually, Guo landed a deal with Apple, and the rest is history. Over 50% of their estimated $165 billion in revenue now comes from Apple. But it wasn't always going smoothly. Foxconn hit international headlines in 2010 after a series of workers suicides at their main factory in Shenzhen. And to put it in context, the suicide rate in, in China is, is around 20 per 100,000. Terry Guo had about a million people working for him at the top of the annual cycle. So that would imply 200 suicides a year. But they had, you know, 14. Uh, well below average, but certainly higher than anyone expected. And because 
This was a company supplying to Apple. It became famous very, very quickly as the Apple supplier and a suicide problem. After the 2010 scandals, he raised wages, set up healthcare clinics, and even set up hotlines to give advice to health workers. Foxconn weathered the crisis, but it was already facing a bigger long-term issue. For the past decade, revenue for electronic hardware manufacturing has decreased and software is on the up. Almost all the world's biggest tech companies are now non-hardware. Guo, who is a manufacturer at heart, hasn't been able to diversify products. Foxconn has been trying and trying and trying for years to get into things like cloud services, software, but they're just not very good at it. Terry Gore doesn't have that creative thinking. He doesn't look at a product and say, how can I add value and charge more for it? And that's the biggest challenge facing Foxconn into the future. 